In this section, we are going to take a more in-depth look at JavaScript events and timers. JavaScript has a number of events. We've already taken a look at the click event, which is called onClick. There are a number of others. For instance, onChange, if the value in a control has changed. The click event is a completed action, click down and release, where there is a separate event for mouse down and mouse up. You can have a separate event for mouse over, select, and so on. Most of these events work in the same way. You assign an event to a control or an HTML element, and then when that event occurs, it calls the JavaScript code assigned to it. One particular category of events that we are going to talk about and look at in more depth are timer events. A timer is something that happens at a set interval. For instance, a digital clock. Every 1000 milliseconds or second, you would want to update the clock. The methods that JavaScript has for timer events are set timeout, set interval, clear timeout, and clear interval. Set timeout is really a delay. You set the amount of delay in milliseconds, and then once that occurs, you call a function. This is a one-time event. Now to contrast that is a set interval. Set interval is a repeated action. At every so many milliseconds, it calls the function. And clear timeout and clear interval stop the events from happening so the functions are not called. Here is an example of set timeout. There is a button with an onClick event that goes to method delay message. Once the delay message function is called, set timeout is then set. Set timeout has a delay of 5000 milliseconds. After 5000 milliseconds, do something is called. It is important to note that unlike a sleep function, the JavaScript code does not stop at set timeout. It sets the timeout and the code simply moves on. So once a delay message is called, it hits set timeout function and then immediately it moves on to the next line of code. At this point, the JavaScript code sits and waits for 5000 milliseconds, at which time function do something is called. And it is called only once. Let's take our tip example and add a set timeout to it. Instead of adding a green background color immediately after the value is set, let's have this go through a timer. So we need to set the set timeout timer. The first parameter we want to pass is the name of the function, which we will call make green. Then the number of milliseconds we will wait. Since we don't want to have to go and find this particular element again, we'll just pass it in as a parameter. After we have created our function, we want to move the style into our timeout function, which will be called after a total of 3000 milliseconds. As you notice, once we press the calculate tip button, the total is immediately displayed to this screen. But only after 3000 milliseconds is the background displayed. Set interval, on the other hand, acts almost like a loop. Once a set interval timer has been started, it continues on until it is explicitly stopped. For example, in this piece of code here, we initialize timer to be null. When function delay message is called, we look if the timer is null or not. If it is null, we start the timer. If it's not null, if it's already active, we stop the timer then set it to null. In the event that you want to pass parameters to a function that's called by a timer, you must pass them in the set timeout function itself rather than in the function call. So why not just write this? Within set timeout, we call multiply and we pass it the parameter of 6 times 7. So what happens is that multiply is called immediately rather than waiting the 2000 milliseconds. 
When creating a timer, just take note not to write the parentheses on the function name. Instead, you want to pass in the name of the function and not call the function itself.